Shut up and sit down. Hello, it's Andy here again. Welcome to part two of a Halloween Jack vid. So I'm going to make a start straight into it and I uh, get working on the scarf. Thank you, Dodge. So I couldn't remember what it was called. So, um, the base coat was done in Carrack Stone, which was then highlighted up with a shabty bone with a over a Agrax Earthshade uh, wash. Now here I am working with, I believe it's um, Screaming Skull, as I appear to have edited out a couple of sections. But as you can see, it's just uh, working to the higher areas, making sure that it, well, it looks natural, it looks like it's moving. Uh, although the figure's fairly static, it does appear to be windswept to, to a degree. But it's got a very much a, a British Army sort of 19. 20s scarf going on, um, very very uh, stylish sort of scarf. So uh, on to the highlighting on the um, red panels of the uh, coat. So it was start off with a mix of gory red and bloody red, uh, working up the higher areas. It's quite a broad highlight I use for this one, as it's quite um, a subtle one. I didn't necessarily need to just pick out the higher areas. Um, as it's uh, a 50-50 mix. Once I got the um, larger sections of the highlight regions done, I went over again with a pure bloody red, uh, just picking out the actual higher sections of the area, of, of the panels, um, just making it really pop, um, pulling out all the uh, ruffles in the thing. Now, as I've said before, this was a um, one of the earlier figs they've done. Uh, they are creating a lot better things. But there's a lot of interesting details about this one, which is why I chose to do it. So again, a little bit of fiery orange now, and just onto the uh, real bright uh, hot spots of the uh, red sections. Just adds a little bit of colour, uh, a little bit of brightness to it, really make, try to make the model stand out a little bit. Got to be very careful though, because some very very small uh, detail work where the white paneling is. So uh, I did spend a lot of time going back and repairing damage to the uh, white sections. One last highlight, just on the top. I'll probably mix a little bit more fiery orange into this, and just ramped uh, extremities of the hotspots now. I'm just trying to uh, make it look a bit more interesting uh, than uh, I would normally do. I was just doing something a little bit different um, than, I would normally, than my normal style. I don't normally um, over highlight uh, quite the same way as I do, did on this figure. So back to the blue and on the blue um, is a mix of air blue and coralline blue. Now I use a coralline blue but it's only the tiniest amount in this at the minute because it's a very very bright blue. Um, I tend to use that as my highlighting blue um, even for the night lights and such. So it really blends, it really mixes well with the other blues um, of, the, of any um, sort of tone really. And I'm doing much the same on as I did with the blues, uh, as, as I did with the reds with, with the blue. Just um, using very subtle transitions initially just to um, bring the um, panels together um, so they all highlight in the same sort of way. Because otherwise it just look a bit wonky and that's the last thing we wanted. Now, as this is uh, part two of the video, I do have to apologise again for any shocking editing. This was my first try, um, so... Technically second. Second try, thank you Dodge. <laughs> uh, this, this was uh, still, I'm still very much learning the software, but uh, I'll get better, hopefully. Either that or I'll, I'll convince Dodge to do it all again. Yep. So yeah, as you can see, I'm adding a bit more Coraline Blue to the colour. Um, working the uh, 
absolute highlighted areas and it just comes out as a really nice uh, vibrant blue when, uh, with the Coraline. It's such a lovely colour. I, I, I really hope that I can find a match for it when I run out. Else otherwise I'm absolutely snooker. And there we are, just pure Coraline now onto the um, just the front regions and over the top of the shoulder pads and uh, across the leading edge of his, uh, back, of his panels of coat. So as I said uh, on the first video, I wasn't happy with the base uh, colour for the uh, pumpkin. So I went over it with two coats of fire orange, uh, which is a Vallejo colour. Uh, it did take two coats uh, because Rhinoxide is such a deep shade. Although, uh, to be fair, using the Rhino going over Rhinoxide would probably down slightly easier than going over a grey. So at least it's of the same sort of uh, warm palette. And once I got the um, the coat I wanted, I uh, put a red wash over it. Uh, this, uh, as this, you can't see at the minute, it's actually a sculpted pumpkin, um, even down to the lines up and down the um, face. So uh, the red really brought out the detail nicely. So now we've got a nice um, smooth coat of the fire orange over the uh, thing. Now to quote um, Duncan from Warhammer Painting, uh, thin, yeah, obviously two, two thin coats. I'm going over with um, Caribou Crimson, I believe, or well, it might be Army Painter Red, no, Army Painter Red Wash, uh, which is just the same as Caribou Crimson to be fair. Um, just to get all the detail to pop, uh, allowing me to highlight the areas that need highlighting and, and such. And you can just start to see the um, the lines in the faces in the face. Now I've got a mix of oh this is uh, for the wooden the leather, which is I start off with a flat earth over the um, entirety of the belt and the upper regions of the wooden, of the wooden uh, haft of the uh, axe thing. And then I went over on the um, point highlights with beige brown. And these are both um, Vallejo paints from the Panzer Aces range. I tend to use them for my uh, leather effects. Um, they just really, really go well with um, the Rhinox hides um, cause of that uh, sort of palette. Uh, they, they really do make nice um, leather sort of colours in the Panzer Aces range. Got some real, real realistic colours what you can use. As you can imagine, it's based on the uh, Second World War uh, sort of core palette, so. You would expect them to be fairly realistic colours rather than the more vibrant ones what you get from the game range. And now I'm using the beige brown on, uh, um, as a point highlight.
So now back to the head. Right there I'm using Elf Skin Tone and Sunny Skin Tone. Um, initially I was going to use Elf Tone, um, as it, but it, I felt it was a little bit too bright for a base. So I'm using Sunny Skin Tone over the, um, with a, a touch of Elf Skin Tone over the initial Fire Orange. Uh, it just came a sort of. I mean, I'm, I'm not much of a pumpkin fan. Uh, I, can't, I can honestly say I've had much dealings with them in the real world, but it seemed to me like it would be an appropriate colour for um, some kind of pumpkin looking um, fruit, vegetable. I'm just taking time just to uh, only paint the segments uh, rather than the um, carved sections. I did try to do something interesting with his eyes, but unfortunately the footage was so shocking uh, that I can't, I couldn't realistically put it in a video. Uh, as I, I was trying to do a sort of a, a blue glowed glowing eyes, like sort of a ghostly sort of effect. But the uh, footage at the end were, wasn't good enough to be uh, worth uh, tr uh, trying to show you. But as you can see, the um, the sunny skin tone and the elf skin tone really works well with that fire orange. For um, they're sort of from the same sort of spectrum. I'm just picking out the details on the face here, uh, trying to make it look like it's a, either a face or a, a helmet of some kind. Either way, it's some kind of weird dude with a pumpkin head. So. Don't ask me why the, he has a pumpkin head, I have no idea. So now I'm highlighting up with just the elf tone at this point. And it, it goes a little bit bright as I start to add more highlights and it's, it, I don't get the desired look um, I was hoping for. So good old Agrax, uh, you can't go wrong with that bad boy. Um, washed it over the top with a uh, little bit of Agrax Earthshade. Uh, just to bring it all down, uh, bring all the colours together, make it look less cartoony, um, which wasn't the sort of a look I was going for. The it was just uh, the wrong shade, um, which is totally my fault. But Agrax fixed that problem. Um, Agrax fixes any problem. Agrax fixes any problem, apparently, and uh, I've just put a touch of Agrax onto the um, onto the fig, onto his face and I'm just finishing off the uh, rip, uh, the bindings on his axe uh, in the same way that I finished off the um, scarf. Anyway that's all we have for now. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked and enjoyed it. So if you do and want to see more of our stuff uh, please give us a big thumbs up and uh, subscribe to our videos take care guys thank you very much